Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this one we do have a handful of things to get through. We do have the confirmation of our first January signing which is of course Leo Yelder. I believe it's Yelder not Haider or Haider or however I was pronouncing it in the last video. He has said himself that he is uh, it is Leo Yelder. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to keep that one there. Um, I'll try to keep that one in the memory banks before I change that to whatever I deem necessary. But, uh, but yes we have that confirmation. We also have a near signing of Romain Mundell as well. We have an outgoing, a couple of outgoings, one of them that has been confirmed being Jewish and Burnett, and another one, of course, being Alex Pritchard as well. But we will firstly go into the signing of uh, Leo Yelder. <laughs> I need to remember that. I need to remember that. But yes, here is the statement from the club, and I'll give you my quick thoughts on it, although I did touch on it in the last video. So the club have said, Sunderland AFC is delighted to announce the signing of Leo Yelder. Arriving at the stage of life from Leeds United for an undisclosed fee, the defender has signed a four-and-a-half-year contract on Wearside. Yelder, 20, has made 33 senior appearances so far in his career, which started with Norwegian side Rosenberg before he moved to Scottish giant Celtic in July 2019. The son of former Nottingham Forest defender Jon Olav Yelder, Leo was born in England and following a loan spell in the Scottish Premiership with Ross County, he returned south of the border in August 2021 to join Leeds. He made his white's debut six months later in the Emirates FA Cup tie against West Ham United before lining up against the Hammers for a second time one week later as his Premier League debut ended in a memorable 3-2 win. Yelda spent the second part of last season on loan in the Skybet Championship with Rotherham United, making 13 appearances to help the Millers maintain their second tier status. Leo said, it feels great to be here and I'm grateful for the opportunity. I spoke to my dad who showed me the size of the club and the support and I knew it was a move I simply couldn't turn down. I'm a ball playing centre back or left back. I like to get up and down the pitch. I've seen, sorry, I've been at some big clubs previously and this has helped me develop as a player and as a person. But I'm now ready to push on and take that next step. Sporting director Christian Speetman added, We're really pleased to have acquired Leo on a permanent basis as he's a player we've admired for some time. He possesses the ability to play three different positions in our back line depending on the formation and he joins us having already experienced the EFL Championship. We hope this will allow him to hit the ground running and help our team throughout the next 16 games whilst also bringing us added strength uh, uh, to, our, sorry, to our squad in the long term. So there we go. There is... Yelder. Leo Yelder has officially signed at the club. It does say undisclosed fee, but I do believe it, well, at least it's heavily rumoured and reported to have been around £2 million, which is a little bit of a, you know, for us in recent years, anyway, that's a bit of a fee. That, that's a bit of a fee if those reports are to be believed. Anyway, but my thoughts on that, happy with it. The only thing there, and I know that Leo himself has said that he can play at left back. He is, and from what I've seen from a lot of Leeds fans, um, uh, amongst others, it, he is absolutely 100% better in a centre-back role, or well, at least on the left of a, a back three or a centre-back role. Left-back, uh, I'm hoping, I'm presuming he is going to be brought in as a left-back or as a utility player because we do have such an abundance of injuries on the left-hand side. So it is, the only minor frustration for me is us spending two million, splashing two million, or however it is, or however much money it is, bringing in the player nevertheless, to play in an incorrect position or a player they're not comfortable in, just to do that again, which we we just obsessed with doing at the moment. And it, like we know, we're playing right backs at left back, we're playing left backs at centre back, we do, did all centre mids at centre back. We just do that all the time. Um, so that is a minor frustration, I guess. But someone you know for the future as well as for the now, as you know, speaking alludes to, he does have championship experience, albeit not a massive amount. But he kind of fits the model of being, you know, a young player, someone who you can put four and a half years into. So we obviously see a long-term future in this lad. So it's nice to get him tied down to a long-term deal. But I'm excited to see him. You know, I don't know a massive amount about him. I'd be lying if I said I did. So I'm excited to see what he, what he is all about. I'm excited to see him in uh, in the red and white of Sunderland. But now moving on. To a lad I am very, very excited about. And only as of this morning, his, uh, our mate uh, Fab uh, online on Twitter stated that Remain Bund Bundle. <laughs> Remain Bundle. Oh, uh, God. Remain Mundle. I, I will not pronounce anyone's name right first time ever. Um, <laughs> Remain Mundle. Uh, formerly, formerly of uh, Spurs, of course. A very, very exciting winger. Very excited. 
Uh, from what I've seen, he is profoundly known as a left winger, but can play on the right as well. He uh, only recently joined Standard Liège uh, in the summer. Um, but I believe that they have a bit of a financial crisis. I don't know what the ins and outs. I could be making it up, but it's just from what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've, what's been rumoured. I believe that there is a bit of a financial crisis there. Um, and, you know, I, so that they, in turn, they need to start shipping players uh, out the door, essentially. Um, so he was massively, massively uh, looked, uh, looked upon as if, uh, as in a, a massive prospect at Spurs. Um, he turned down a deal at Spurs after coming up through the academy. He had an excellent season in there. I think it was under-21s, under-23s. Uh, I think it was something like eight goals and five assists, something like that. Looking really, really good. I've seen a lot of fans, Spurs fans, really big in this lad up, saying that they were so, so excited and they were gutted that they didn't manage to you know, keep, uh, keep an eye on his progress at Spurs because he turned down a deal to go to Stanley Liège. And I don't know how, how much of a financial... Um, influence that would have been. Of course, he might have just think, you know, even though he's only 20 years of age, mind. Uh, um, is it 20 years of age? Could even be younger. Um, let me just quickly uh, check that. Yeah, 20 years of age. I thought he was 20. Yeah, 20 years of age. Um, uh, I don't think he would. He will have known that his chances at Spurs in the Premier League would be highly limited. They'd be very limited. Um, so for him to turn down what would have been a lot, probably a long term big money contracts at Spurs to go to Standard Liège where, yeah, they're in financial problems now. But I can't imagine them being able to compete too much with Spurs. Um, but he's gone there thinking, you know, it's a big team, big club, going to Europe, um, first team football, let's see what I can do here. And obviously it hasn't panned out, but I've seen a lot of Spurs fans saying that they did think that he was going to be like the next big thing and then, he, then he's gone and they were gutted about it. Or at least a large portion of Spurs fans have sort of given that impression so I'm very, very excited about that one. But yeah, as I said, just before I started uh, making this video, Fab had announced that he has just landed in England and is en route to Sunderland to hopefully sign that contract because what an exciting player that would be. And a lot of Spurs fans as well saying, you know, we've picked up Clark who was w with them when he was a youngster and Mundell now as well, potentially. That could have been Spurs, you know, in a, in a different timeline. That could have been Spurs partnership pairing on the on the wings at some point but now it's going to be at Sunderland and I'm so excited if this is the case so Mundell is a player we should be keeping an eye on and we could easily see him signed as, as early as today now a couple of outgoings we have Pritchard who is largely rumoured to be joining former Sunderland manager Tony Mowbray at Birmingham it's, it's a bit of a mad one isn't it really considering Tony Mowbray weren't playing him uh, for a large chunk of this season. Uh, a lot of people have hinted that Speakman has control of the team, which I think is bollocks, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's bollocks uh, in terms of picking the lineup and stuff like that. I just don't, it just doesn't work, I don't know. Um, however, there may have been the influence of they tried to push him out the door or he wanted to leave in the summer, so, so they just didn't play him. However, now... Birmingham want him. I don't know if that's a that's a Tony Mowbray thing saying he wants him there. I don't know. Uh, but but the fact of the matter is, we offered him a one year deal, largely rumored to be on the same amount of money, and he thought he was worth more than that, and he wanted a little bit more uh, consistency, stability, and we didn't offer him that. Whereas Birmingham have offered him a two and a half year deal and more money. So that's the deal. I'm not going to go into the whole ins and outs of whether he should. Uh, uh, withdrawn from the squad and all that kind of shit. I've done a video on that. I'm not going to get into it. But that is the sort of playing field at the moment. So it looks like Alex Pritchard will be joining Tony Mowbray at Birmingham. And now another departure is Jewison Burnett, who's going out to FC Aris and loan for the remainder of the season. The Greek side, I think they're currently fifth in their league. Um, they're still quite a bit off fourth place, the Olympiacos uh, there. But uh, that's exactly what we want to see. We want to see Jewison Burnett. You know, he wants to stake a claim in his international team as well at Costa Rica. So he needs to be playing football, essentially. And at the end of the day, we all want the best for the lad. I like what I've seen from Jewison Burnett, albeit him being very, very raw. And it'll do him the world good to play week in, week out. And I'll be very excited to watch his progress because I do like Dewey. I think he's uh, he's got something about him. But we'll have to see how that goes. Now, um, I will wrap up the video by saying there was... Again, the roller coaster of emotions with Amad Diallo. Uh, yesterday, there was big rumours by several, several um, journalists on Twitter yesterday stating that Amad Diallo has directly asked Manchester United to allow him to go back out on loan and specifically to Sunderland. So immediately, 
Twitter is in uproar. I'm buzzing my tits off. <laughs> I'm buzzing. But that was quickly shut down by the man Fab himself, saying that um, that that you know, contrary to other reports, Amadiello has not asked to leave Manchester United and is quite happy to fight for his place there. And Amadiello himself liked that tweet. We keep it sounds pathetic, doesn't it? That this is the way reports are going these days. We just nitpicking at anything. Oh, Diallo liked this. Oh, Diallo liked this. You don't know what's going on, do you? But, uh, but yeah, so you never know. <laughs> there could still be a chance, but we're just getting, the heartstrings are getting tugged there, aren't they? But yeah, so Sunderland make the signing of Leo Yelder. Uh, Burnett goes out on loan. Pritch looks like he's on the verge of joining Birmingham. And Mundell looks like he's on the uh, verge of joining us as well. I still think we need a striker and a holding, midf- sorry, holding midfielder, ideally, so for it to be deemed a somewhat successful transfer window, you know, with a day left. It's going to be a very busy 24, 48 hours, isn't it, for all involved. But uh, anyway, let me know what you think about everything mentioned in the video. And if you have enjoyed, hit the like button for me. It'll be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care and stay jammy.